Just left the Airbnb, another city down, on to Rome. Woohoo, let's go. Subscribe to join us on all our adventures. After one last stroll through Florence, we were off to the train station to make our way to Rome. So the URL pass, you still have to reserve seats sometimes, but it would get you on the train, but we had to reserve two tickets on the high-speed train to Rome, which is only an hour and a half, which is great. It costs 20 euros, plus just the cost of our URL pass. I know these videos make it seem like we always eat at McDonald's. I promise you we don't, but we had to get a quick bite and try some new to us menu items before hopping on our train. We made it to Rome. Yay. Milan, Zermatt, La Spezia, Florence, now the fifth destination, Rome. You excited? Yes. All right, let's do it. We arrived in Rome quite hungry and decided to grab a quick bite before enjoying the rest of our day wandering around the city. We spotted some students conducting archaeological research near the Colosseum, which was pretty cool to watch, and then we headed back to our Airbnb for the night after stocking up on the staples of bread, cheese, and wine for our makeshift dinner. The next morning, we embraced the rain and headed out for a tour of the Roman Forum, Palatine Hill, and the Colosseum. We began at the Forum, the center of political and social life in ancient Rome. We walked through the ruins, learning of key moments and prominent figures, including a group of women known as the Vestals. These women were selected at or before the age of 10 and required to take a 30-year vow of chastity. Their chief task was keeping the sacred fire of Vesta, goddess of hearth and home, from ever going out. walked along the historic cobblestone roads of the city, passed by the site of what was thought to be a former residence of Julius Caesar, and then headed up what has been called the first nucleus of the Roman Empire, Palatine Hill, where we got a great view of it all from above. Making our way to the Colosseum, we passed under the Arch of Titus, built in 81 AD by the Emperor Domitian after the death of his brother to both honor him and commemorate the Roman victory in 71 AD that culminated in the fall of Jerusalem. From there, it was into the Colosseum we went, alongside a pretty large crowd of fellow tourists, despite it being earlier in the day and the weather being a little dreary. Seeing this wonder of the world with your own eyes is almost indescribable. The amount of history and detail it contains is astounding. One of my favorite parts was looking down at the Hypogeum. This area below the Colosseum floor was an elaborate network of tunnels, chambers, and trapdoors where gladiators, animals, and prisoners were kept before entering the arena. It is incredible how much these still standing walls, originally built in 80 AD, have seen. From naval battles to gladiator fights, it is estimated that in its roughly 350 year history of spectacles, as many as 400,000 people and millions of animals perished here in front of crowds ranging from 50 to 80,000 in size. Receiving over 4 million visitors a year, it is the most popular tourist attraction in Italy and one of the most popular in the world. The upper story of the Colosseum contains a vast number of artifacts, everything from bones to dice and even examples of ancient graffiti. We took our time soaking it all in before heading out to see more sites.
first stop was the Mercado Centrale, a delicious food hall with every option of food you could imagine. We opted for some truffle pasta, which we scarfed down before making our way across town to the Trevi Fountain. All across Rome, there are many nods to the mythical tale of Remus and Romulus, seen suckling on a she-wolf whose story details the founding of the city by Romulus. It's a fascinating tale to dive into if you're interested. We stopped in front of this beautiful museum for a picture and then walked down to the very crowded Trevi Fountain. Not sure why, but when we visited, they had gates up around the fountain steps, which made for our humorous and unsuccessful coin toss. Nevertheless, it was a beautiful sight to take in. Next, we were off to the Pantheon. The Pantheon is one of the best preserved monuments of ancient Rome. The structure, completed around 126 to 128 AD during the reign of Emperor Hadrian, features a rotunda with a massive domed ceiling that was the largest of its kind when it was built. The Pantheon is situated on the site of an earlier structure of the same name, built around 25 BC by statesman Marcus Agrippa, and is thought to have been designed as a temple for Roman gods. The opening of the dome is not covered and allows for light and rain to enter the temple, and was added deliberately to Hadrian's original design to let the visitors of the temple be in direct contact with the heavens. Following the Pantheon's conversion into a Christian church, it eventually became the burial place for Renaissance figures including painter Raphael, composer Arcangelo Corelli, and architect Baltasare Peruzzi. Today, the Pantheon is a major tourist destination for visitors from around the world while continuing to function as a church. stop in Rome was the Spanish Steps. Composed of 12 ramps and 135 steps, it is considered the widest and longest staircase of Europe, welcoming millions of tourists and Romans who visit it at all times of the day. We packed in as much as we could into our two days in Rome, but could have easily spent a lot longer seeing all this city has to offer. Tune in next Sunday to catch us in our final city in Italy.